thank you dads for being our very first example, for setting the pace and leading the race. Thank you for being a man after God's own heart. Happy Father's Day. Nikensile, Baya Donkey, and Gosi. Galebu, Nia Tawas, Galebu, Dolebuha, Dinotin. Thank you, Pastor Art, for every sacrifice. Thank you for being a trailblazer and for leading us with integrity. Thank you for being a man of honor, a man after God's own heart, always leading us closer to Jesus. Pastor Art, happy Father's Day. We want to say from the bottom of our hearts, Thank you. We want to thank you for being such a great father to all of us. We truly want to thank you for being the greatest spiritual father to every single one of us. And thank you so much for continuing to inspire faith in us, in our lives, and the millions of, of many people across the globe. We come today and we thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for who you are. I don't think as children of yours we can ask for anything better. Yeah. We got the best. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And be blessed on yeah. this Father's Day, Pastor Ari. Yeah. Amen. We love you. May you enjoy this day, Pastor. Happy Father's Day. We love honor and celebrate you. Thank you for every opportunity that you have ever given us and we just want to say that we truly do value you. Happy Father's Day, Pastor Art. Happy Father's Day. Thank you for tuning into our CRC live broadcast. Shortly, Pastor Art will be blessing us with an anointed message. Make sure that you sit right there and keep watching. Yes, CD, but first we are going to praise the Lord. Remember, as our praises go up, heaven comes down. So let's get to our feet as we give over to the band. Amen. Good morning, CRC family. We heard Angelique. As our praises goes up, heaven comes down. Let's all stand. Praise and worship. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let's go.
God's done great things And He's not done Let the sound of heaven Come and flood the earth Let the saints rise up As your glory fills the church For the Lord is good And His love endures forever Because he healed my heart, he changed my name, forever free. 
on with this Father's Day. Let's honor our Heavenly Father. Look those hands to him. Come on, see your seat. All over South Africa, come on, lift your hands. Honor him. That's what we do. That's our calling to honor him, to glorify him. hands to you. The Bible says, I would that men pray everywhere, lifting holy hands. Father, we come to bring you the honor, the glory, the adoration, the recognition, the worship that belongs to you and you alone. The glory, the acclamation. We exalt you, Father. And we thank you for all that you have done for us. That you loved us so much that you sent your son to die for us. How can we ever thank you enough? How can we ever praise you and worship you? How can we not be the ones who return again and again and again to say thank you, Father, our Father, Abba Father, thank you for your love, your loving kindness. Thank you for being understanding, for being merciful, for being gracious. Thank you for always being there. Thank you even as David said, when my father and mother forsakes me, God, you are there to take me up. And today we want to take a moment to say thank you. As people are celebrating Father's Day, we want to celebrate the greatest father, the father of the universe our Father, our God, our Lord, our Christ, our Messiah. We worship you, Father. We give you praise. We give you adoration. Come on. Give Him praise. Give Him adoration today all over this place. Come on there in TVN land. TVN year to one gospel praise TV. Stand off your couch today. To stand is a sign of honor. It's a sign of recognition, a sign of worship, a sign of respect. And that's what we do. We worship the living God. We praise Him. We adore Him. Come on. Oh, come on, CRC. Make a joyful shout of praise unto the Lord, all your lands. Hallelujah. And let's serve Him with gladness and recognition and appreciation of our Father. Oh, come on. Whatever language you speak this morning, say thank you. Thank you in your language, whatever it is. Come on, come on, Father. Come on, Mother. Come on, Sister. Come on, Brother. Say, Donkey, Donkey, Father. Come on, there. YouTube, CLC Online, Radio Stations, Correctional Facilities. All over Russia this morning, Israel, America, Europe, India, Pakistan, China, Africa. We serve Father's Day, but hey, we have the greatest Father. He is the God of all gods. He is the King of all kings. And even if we just stand to our feet all day today and we give Him worship and honor and praise, we are doing the right thing in Jesus' name. Day and night and night and day, we bring you praise in Jesus' name. Listen, LJ, listen, listen. It's Sunday morning. I'm not supposed to uh, prophesy. Please, sound man, do my sound like normal. Um, come here. I, 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 I see you in a straight. Like Paul says, I'm in a straight between two. And he's talking about going to heaven or staying on this earth. Um, being called by God is a very special thing. Carrying God's presence is even a greater thing. And then bringing the presence of God to the house of God is the greatest thing. And I'll say this to you this morning. Hear me clearly and you'll know. Remember this all the days of your life. That Satan is a trophy hunter. And he knows exactly in the spirit what God has placed upon an individual. And he'll do everything in his power to take you out of that place. This is not a precious statement. You know, I've pastored this church and I've done it. And I've prophesied to my son once on a Sunday morning. And it was an uncomfortable moment for him. But hear me very carefully. You have been raised for this hour. 
And uh, the devil knew exactly what Jesus was predestined for. So he took him and he showed him the kingdoms of the world. And he showed him riches. He showed him fame. He showed him success. And he chose his father's will. You are a great attorney. I know that. You have a great legal mind. But I'll tell you something this morning. God has raised you up for something more than the legal profession. And I pray today. I know you've booked your ticket. I don't know where you're going, but I know you've booked your ticket. But last minute call before you board. Because ultimately, and this is not just for him, it's for many people there. The people that employ us, they don't own us. The people that pay us, they don't determine our future. It is our Father. And if there's nothing to walk away from, there's nothing to walk to. You've been raised for this hour. Hear me, LJ. You've been raised for this hour. You have a very unusual gift and an anointing upon your life. And I pray to God, His protection upon it. I pray to God that nothing will steal it. That every plan that the devil has will be thwarted will be confused, will be disrupted, and will be stopped, and that you will be surrounded with a hedge of protection. The battles we fight that nobody knows, God knows, but those battles are the ones that make us stronger and that affirm who we are. Because if you are not called, there is no battle. Come on. The greater the calling, the greater the battle, and the greater the wrestling on the inside. And I want to really ask God to talk to you today. I'm going to take you there behind the box and I'm going to pray for you. The money or the box. <laughs> you know, God doesn't stop a service and I'm not saying I'm anything. Come here. Lift your hands. Whatever God wants. Nothing more, nothing less. Because what is upon you is big. And I don't want to see it lost for anything in Jesus' name. Now God's going to talk to you. And whenever you are going to know that you know that you know. Whatever it is. I'm not saying this way or that way. You know the Lord said to me once... I'm bringing you to a place and you can you have a choice. You make the decision. There are two roads always for every person. And I release you now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Advocate Dan, really, I, look, I've just been in Cape Town. We had an incredible time, but that revival anointing is still upon me, so I'm going to back off of it in a second. Come here, Advocate Dan. Don't worry. I know everybody wants to say Happy Father's Day. We'll get there. But let's take care of kingdom business first. Amen. 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 I'll tell everybody here today, you are, you are so important to God. Listen. Come walk with me. Walk with me. You are so important to God. The devil will do everything in his power everything in his power everything in his power to stop you from your assignment he knows exactly what your assignment is he knows it he'll give you every reason to quit on your assignment every reason in the book he'll offer you fame wealth money if that doesn't work he'll he'll try and frustrate you he'll bring the challenges of this world he'll bring sickness he'll bring disease he'll bring calamity he'll do everything in his power to try and get you to quit on what God has called you. But when those things come against us, we need to become more determined. More determined. Come on, give him a praise here today. God's going to touch you in your body today. And God's going to lengthen your years. He's going to lengthen your years. I said he's going to lengthen your years. He will prolong your days on the earth. And that which is meant for evil, God will turn around for good in Jesus' name. God will enlarge your influence. God will expand your boundaries. 
nationally, not just where you are in Gauteng. Nationally, God is going to give you tremendous, tremendous influence. You are going to mentor many people, future politicians. God has prepared you for this hour and the devil will not stop it in the name of Jesus. Fire now in Jesus' name. Touch his body, Father. Touch him, touch him, touch him. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Come here, his wife. Okay, you see, there I go. I better stop. I better stop. Come here. Quick, 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 quick. Quick, 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 quick. Quick, quick, quick. You see, I get my pa gebruik for a rustige dienst. Hierdie is a rustige dienst, okay? Hierdie is a rustige dienst. Hierdie is a rustige dienst. Ek breek die werke van die duivel. Ek breek die werke van die duivel. Listen, sister, listen, listen, listen. Listen, you carry a very strong anointing of groaning, travailing and intercession. Session. You need to lead the woman to the altar. You need to lead the prayer warriors to the altar. You need to lead them. Lead them. Because as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. You will cause many, 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 many to turn from darkness to light. It is in you. It is in you. So when my spirit comes upon you, says the Lord, do not hold back. You cry out. You cry out. People may not understand it, but it is my spirit working in you and my spirit working through you to liberate those in the buildings, those in the place that are captive by the enemy. Your prayers will liberate them. Your prayers will separate them. Your prayers will break the chains of darkness. I release you in a dimension of authority and power now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come here, my brother. You see, I need to be on the platform. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. I see tremendous influence politically, 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 politically. Political arenas that God has told you to enter in. You will enter those arenas. You will see from next year, God is going to open doors in a new way and you will become a very, very, very influential person in this country in the name of Jesus. You pursue that with all your heart. All opposition has been there to strengthen you. You will go forward because God says, I make your peace like bronze. God says, I give you a heart for it that no enemy, no plan of Satan will stand against you. You will be my voice and you will awaken many. You will awaken many to return to righteousness for this is my call. This is my hand upon you in Jesus' name. I thank you for her anointing, Father, now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Have you been busy preaching? Have you been busy preaching? No. You better be here tonight. I'm going to pray for you. Set you on fire. Come here. Why are you in the background? Raise her up. Quick, 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 quick. Lift your hands now. Songs of joy and songs of love. God's giving you a spirit of praise. You in yourself. I bring you out in Jesus' name. Out. Out. See the people in the spirit and release them in the anointing. In Jesus' name. Come here, my brother. You can be very powerful in the spirit. You're powerful in the spirit. You, you, you like in ankle deep water. Uh uh. Whatever is stopping you, I take away from you. Today you step in. You step into what God has for you. You step into what God has for you. The power God has placed in you is a power that should bring liberation. Power that should bring freedom. Not only in the church, but out there in the world as well. God has given you an unusual strength, but you are not operating in that strength. I wake you up today. I wake you up today. You stand up in the name of Jesus, mighty man. You stand up in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I know I don't have time uh, to pray for everybody, but um, I have to do what God tells me to do. And I'm still deep over my head in revival. So while so you're sitting in your skepticism, um, okay, I better back off now. Because I almost have to go to Joburg and we haven't even started. Happy Father's Day!
Come on, all the brothers, all the men of honor. We honor you. We love you. Come on. Come on. Can everybody sit down except the men? All the brothers, you stay standing. All the brothers, come on, my brothers, my brothers, brothers, my brothers, my brothers who are not confused about who they are. This is our time. I said this is our time. We are in a critical time in our world and God has raised us up for this hour. We are the leaders. We are God's chosen. We are God's appointed. We are God's anointed. And we are going to stand up and we are going to do greater things for God in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 I know you're already very high, but God is going to take you higher in government. Listen to me. You are going to hold a key position in government very soon. Get ready for it. Get ready for it. Get, I'm talking about a ministerial post. Get ready for it. I prophesied over you a ministerial post. You are going to see it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You will see it. You will see it. You will see it first. You will put this police, metro police. You will put police in order. You will put the police in order. God has raised you up. But because you have been faithful, God is going to use you greater, greater. I see a weight of anointing. I see things shifting in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Come here. I'm going to pray for you. I know. I show you. Come here. Come here. Yes, that's the presence of God. You're hungry for God. You are going to see this nation healed. God is going to give you favor. Favor. I release favor over you. I release a heavy anointing upon you, the weight of God's glory that will shift things, that will eradicate corruption from the police force. God will show you what's going on in the Hawks. God will show you on what's going in iPad. God's going to show you what's going on in Metro. God is going to use you, my sister. You're already there. You're already second in charge. Sometimes you are in charge. But God says, I will add to you. I will increase you. I will enlarge you. I will give you greater influence in this nation. In the name of Jesus now. Now, yeah, that's the anointing. That's the anointing. That's the anointing. And don't tell me that's a game. This lady has never been prayed for in her life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We need some heavy weights to shift things in this country. To hell with the devil. To hell with crime to hell with corruption, to hell with what's happening in this country. God is going to raise up the righteous in positions of authority. God is handpicking His servants in this hour. I'm telling you, at this hour, watch, 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 watch. You get ready for God to use you and you watch what God is going to do through you. But the devil will not have his way with South Africa. As I prophesied over LJ, I say, the devil will not have his way with South Africa. I'll tell you why. Because the good men will rise up in this country. The brothers will rise up and the sisters. But this is Father's Day. Because if good men say and do nothing, evil will prevail. It's time to rise up in business. Rise up in politics. Rise up in sport. Rise up in business. Rise up and build this country that we all love so dearly. In Jesus' name, shout Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the presence of God. I don't feel like preaching. I feel like kicking the devil. <laughs> no, leave her. Leave her. It's okay. I know she's a dignified lady, but just enjoy God's presence. Because God's talking to you right now, my sister. God's talking to you. God's giving you strategy. And right now, God is showing you those that you cannot trust. Trust Him. He's showing the ones you cannot trust. And you are going to sleep and God's going to give you a strategy. Because we have to, um, I don't want to say, some of you recognize who she is, etc. So it's, it's, it's challenging for me to pray for a person like that because they have such high authority in the nation and visible. Um, but God is putting his hand on people in this country. And uh, God's going to show you uh, the, 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 the people who's, who's, who's right and is right and a falsehood. God's going to expose the criminal elements. And uh, I promise you, you can, you can bank on this. God is going to give you one of the most senior positions in our country. Yeah. 
I just need one person to agree, and I have that. I have the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Okay, now let's reverse. Fathers, please stand up. All the men stand up. Holy Brothers. You know, it's not an easy thing to be a man. Even though they sing a song. It is a man's world. We know it is a... Almost I said, uh, 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 almost I said flippant. It is a flippant tough thing to be a man. Black school. Let's just be honest for a second. So many challenges after COVID, businesses, and you just have to keep everything together, and you have to be strong all the time, and you have to keep it all together, and you have to get back out there even if you don't feel like it. And I don't know how many thank yous you ever get. And as a fellow soldier in the Lord, as a fellow brother in the Lord, I want to thank you for going back into the marketplace every day. Even when you don't feel like it, I want to thank you for being a faithful man. I want to thank you for being a worshiper of God. I want to thank you for loving your families. I want to thank you for loving the kingdom of God. I want to thank you for being men of integrity. I want to thank you for raising your children in the ways of God. I honor you. I salute you and may God give you more strength and may God give you more grace and may God cause your enemies to fall at your feet and I pray for you as Jabez prayed. I pray may God bless you. May God enlarge your territory. May God keep all evil away from you. May your enemies fall before you. May God bless you out of your socks. May you be loved. May you be treasured and may you know more than anything else that you are loved by God your Father. You have a Father who loves you, who treasures you, who believes you. Yes, we are not perfect, but we are a work in progress and I know you are doing your best. Like I said to mothers, mothers feel guilty about not always being perfect mothers, but as a father uh, driven and, and, and have traveled, had to travel all over the world, preach the gospel and raise my kids, I struggled with guilt a lot. I thank God for His grace upon my children. And I want to release you from that burden of guilt. And I want to encourage you to spend moments with your children because it is those moments that make memories. And that's what your child will remember. So you don't be that hard on yourself. If nobody believes in you, you know you have a father who believes in you. And you keep on keeping on. And you, my brother, you be strong in the Lord and in the power of His grace. May God surprise you. May God bless you. May God give you the desires of your heart. May God take you places you never thought possible in Jesus' name. So come on, all the sisters, you can give the brothers now a big, big, big cheer. Come on. No, give a big shout out and a big cheer. Look at these thousands of men here today. That's why we have a strong church, okay? Because of these brothers. When, when, when men are strong, communities are strong, a country is strong, a church is strong, families are strong. So come on, give these men a big round of thanks and appreciation. And spoil them out of their socks today. You know, we get one Father's Day and then we have to pay the bill in any case. So, happy Father's Day. Family, can I ask you to stay standing, please? Those watching from other venues, will you stand? As we're going to honor the gift God has given us. Amen. Let us honor the gift God has given us. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 4, 15, you have, you have thousand others teaching you, but you have one Father. You have one spiritual father. Pastor, we want to say from the bottom of our hearts today, thank you for answering that call. 37 years ago, thank you. There's not a life here, those watching that are not better off. If I can take every word on that blocks, that's what you stand for. That's, that's what you rub off on strong men. We say today, we love you. We honor you and we thank you for your sacrifice. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. I appreciate that. I love you. I love you back and I honor you back.
iets. En jullie lijken zo so mooi vandaag. Mijn machta. Jullie moeten meer op die platform komen. Dan gaan jullie beter lijken in elk geval. Um, I love all of you. It's an honor to, to pastor uh, the church in this great move. Uh, I love you. And um, I know I am nothing without Jesus. That is not just a, a false statement of humility. That's one thing I absolutely know. Because I never, ever, 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 ever envisage, number one, to be a pastor, number two, to pastor a church uh, of this caliber, the beautiful people in Bloemfontein, Johannesburg, and all over South Africa. I never envisaged that. All I wanted to do was uh, just serve God, and I give Him all the honor and all the glory. So come on, let's give Him the biggest praise and the biggest honor today. Come on. Now give somebody a big hug this morning. Come on, the presence of God is all over this place. Less than all the short-winded for next week, everybody will be back. Uh, it's not Women's Day, but Elizabeth Taylor, as she said to one of her husbands, I think it was Richard Burton. I mean, she had like nine husbands, and then she said to him when she married him the second time, she said, I'll only keep you a little while. So I'll only keep you a little while this morning because I've got to fly away, not to glory, to, to Johannesburg. Ezekiel 22 verse 30, I want to talk uh, very quickly. I have about uh, my word. So I'm going to go on, on triple fast forward. Men of honor, specifically looking at David. Ezekiel 22 verse 30, the Bible says, I sought for a man among them that you should make up their heads and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it. Now, I'm not minimizing women today. I thank God for every strong woman that God is raising up. The three amens, but that's okay. You're silent because we're talking about men today. But our world needs strong men. Our nation needs righteous, strong men. We cannot be asleep at this hour with everything the world and those who are behind the agendas of the world are throwing at us and at our children, by the way. I'm 58 years old. Whatever's happening right now, I'll survive it. I'll thrive through it. But I'm way beyond thinking about myself. I have to think about my children and my grandchildren and number six is coming on tuesday hallelujah another gb my word i thought um when one came i thought oh no don't call me opa but now i'm gonna have six no sick no i don't say anything i just say oh me and then i say oh another one or i say oh when uh, uh, who's pregnant next and I'm sure Angelique will be pregnant, and then Chanel and Johannesburg, and then Angelique again. And if I see again, I'm going to have 10. But that's okay. They're all world changes. So there are so many challenges. Listen, men, I want to talk to the warrior on the inside of you, not the warrior in your mind. The mighty man that God called you to be. The wars and pandemics. Whatever you think about our president, thank God he spoke to Zelensky. And he's speaking to Putin. And thank God that men in Africa are beginning to stand up. And I'm very vocal. With the coming elections, we are not going to allow color-coded um, policies. Thank you for the three amens. That's okay. Because some of you think uh, two rights make a wrong. We have to come against the agendas, my brother, that are trying to steal our children's identity. We raise our children the way God created them. We have to come against the giants of poverty. Because if we don't, it will affect all of us. Giants of unemployment. Giants of crime. Giants of corruption. We can't be looking the other way. So as, as, as men, you study the Old Testament, it, it was men that went to war. I think America is a bit confused right now. But it was men that were called to the front line and to battle and to wage war. And until you don't connect with that purpose on the inside, you're always going to be looking for something else. 
You were made by God to conquer. And if you're not conquering the right thing, you will end up pursuing and conquering the wrong thing. So you are created by God to be a provider of your home, a provider in society, to be a protector. The fact that we are the right capital in the world is an indictment against men, all of us. We can no longer allow it. Doesn't help we blame the government. We have to get involved in our communities. We have to begin with our own policing uh, forums that ensure that women and children are safe in South Africa. Say amen in Jesus' name. We have to deal with the giants in our land and not fall asleep. This is our time. Our world is in a, in a, in a state of crisis. Crisis plural. It's men we are called to be leaders. Leaders in society. Leaders in our homes. King, priest and prophet of the home. Leaders in the church. Not only are the women called to pray, we are called to pray. We have to be mobilized as an army of God. The brothers, everybody, a man say hurrah or hurrah, whatever. We are anointed by God for leadership. As a man, you have leadership upon you. When men are strong, churches are strong. Families are secure. Communities are safe. How a man can rape his daughter, I will never know. How a man can rape an unknown woman, I will never know. I pray that after next year's elections, that the politicians will come to their senses and that the criminals will fear the judiciary system and will fear our police force. That rapist will be dealt with severely. I've said to many um, politicians, I said we need a campaign saying chop it off. You say that doesn't sound very loving, Pastor. I'll tell you what, you chop 300 men, every rapist will disappear because no man wants to lose that. I mean, let's surgically remove it. Chop it off. We should not be fearing the criminals. The criminals should be fearing the law. More than ever, we need righteous leaders in our nation that will govern this country. And I believe next year will be critical. Coalition government... And I'm praying that those that serve in that coalition government will be handpicked by God. I don't want to say what else I'm praying, because some of them may not live to see that election. Proverbs 29, verse 2, the Bible says, When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when a wicked man rules, the people groan. A lot of groaning in South Africa. A lot of people rejoicing this morning. A little girl that's waking up in a squatter camp. A man that has to sit by the road begging. His dignity stripped from him. We have to change it. Put dignity and honor back on men in society. And it's going to take men to do that. Men who live not just for themselves, but men who understand the hour. Men who will take up the burden of responsibility and change society. So all men can be earners. All men can be providers. All men can have an education that's the country we have to build so more than ever we need men to take their place in the home church get involved get involved in business structures get involved in mentoring structures get involved in teaching get involved in caring be a man not just to your family but be a man in the church, in the workplace, in the community. We are the pace setters. Be a man of God on the sport field. Be a man of God in the political arena. Be a man of God in the entertainment industry. Be a community builder. That's who we are. We build communities. Get elected on the board. Become involved in the school. Not just the mothers, but you. Get involved in politics. You be the protector. You become the voice. You become the light. You become the salt. Because that's who God created you to be. 
You be the one to stand for God unashamedly. You be the one to stand for justice and against all injustice, no matter the color. Because injustice doesn't have a color. We stand against all social injustice. Can I have an amen today? God bless you, television audience. Jump to the social platforms. Amen. Hallelujah. We have to stand against all forms of evil in society as men and form partnerships, civil society, the religious sector, the business sector. Align ourselves with politicians that have righteous policies, righteous legislation that are not there to keep themselves in power, but people that truly serve the people of South Africa. Remember the people have the power. I said the people have the power and the people have to show the power next year. You have to go to the voting polls and you have to vote. You have to speak up. You have to stand up. You have to maybe become a ward councillor. There's no telling what God can do with you. As an attorney, why don't you become the ward councillor of that estate, of that area, and get yourself elected to the municipality and deal with the lack of service delivery. It doesn't help we sit and pray, let the woman pray, but let the brothers rise and let the brothers go. Come on. Amen. If good men say and do nothing, evil will prevail. So I know it's Father's Day, but we will never be good fathers until we become good, godly men. Being a man, functioning as a man, taking responsibility as a man, thinking like a man, acting like a godly man, working like a godly man, are prerequisites to being a good father. You take God out of the equation, no man has any perimeters. No man has any self-control. That's why when we talk about men of honor, we have to talk about the most important thing, and that is we need to be men of God firstly. Men that love God, men that honor God, men like Joshua who said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Come Sunday, honey, you dress up and we will show up and we will sit in our seat in church and our children will be taught the word of God. David was a man of God. He's a man after the heart of God. Five minutes. He's a man that serves the will and the purpose of God in his generation. In Acts chapter 13, the Bible says, and when God removed Saul because he forgot his purpose, he raised up for him David as king, to whom also he gave a testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. Oh my word, may God say that about me. May God say that about you. Dolph, a man after my own heart. Clayton, a man after my own heart. No matter what you're doing, you may uh, uh, be a farmer, but you're a man after the heart of God. Because if you're a man after the heart of God, you will love people the way God loves people. You will want to please God and you will want to serve God. A man after the heart of God. You will be compassionate. You will walk in integrity. You will be generous because your heart is in the hand of the Lord. And that's what the Bible says. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord and he turns it whichever way he wants to. If God doesn't have our hearts, man, he has nothing. God needs your heart. I think sometimes strong men think serving God means you are weak. Absolutely the opposite. You need to be a very strong man to serve God because it requires tremendous humility to lay your life down for the cause of Christ. Tremendous humility to serve God when everything else in you wants to go in a different direction. That's why David is noted in the Bible as a man after the heart of God. Why does the Bible say that? Because he's a man who will do all my will, not his will, God's will. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep and was buried with his fathers and saw corruption. So yes, he made mistakes. There's not a man that will never make a mistake. But you're not defined by your mistake. You are defined by your getting back up and returning to your father and keeping your heart in the hand of God so that you can be a man after God's heart. Come on. It's not how you fall. It's how you get up and you get back to your purpose. You get back to your battle stations. 
and you get back to being that man that God called you to be. In 1 Samuel chapter 13, the Bible speaking about Saul, he says, Your kingdom shall not continue, for the Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. Evil, that's a mouthful. Because the Bible says, The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, looking for a man whose heart is loyal toward him. We know that God doesn't look at the outward appearance. He doesn't look at the size of your bicep or the size of your bank balance. He looks at the size of your heart. Whether it is a heart that is after God. And when that heart is after God, automatically that heart will be filled with the purpose of God. And then you cannot live for yourself. You cannot use your gifts and your talents merely to enrich yourself. You are a man that chases after God. And I'll tell you, the closer you get to God, the more you see the brokenness and the more compassionate you become, the more you become the good Samaritan or the good South African. And you realize something has to be done. I'm not going to be the Levite or the priest and look the other way. I will engage the suffering. I will take care of the orphans. I will take care of the widows. I will be involved in job creation. I will be involved in bringing education. I will be involved in standing against injustices. A man after the heart of God. A man that loves God with all his heart, soul, spirit and might. That is the man that God will use at this hour. And the woman, the man with a womb, Wow factor, man. I don't know. No, you get yourself in trouble. Don't say that thought. So what was it about David that God loved so much about him? I have to go. Number one, he was humble. Mm. He's the greatest king ever Israel ever had. And yet the humblest. He never took glory and honor. And it never got big in his own eyes. The Bible talks about David as he remained a shepherd boy in his own eyes. He's king of kings. He's the greatest warrior, but also the greatest worshiper. He remained small in his own eyes. And I love this. In 2 Samuel 7 verse 8, and then King David went in and he sat before the Lord, which we all should do as men, and reflect. And he said, who am I, O Lord, God, and what is my house that you have brought me this far? Who am I? What is my house that you have brought me this far? We need to reflect this, man. And the first thing we have to reflect on is our relationship with God. And be those men that love God unashamedly, unconditionally, and passionately. Because I promise you in that place is where you stay humble it's in that place. Well, actually, your humility requires that you go back there or will take you back there. Because humility says, Lord, I live dependent on you and dependent on your grace. I didn't do it myself. This is David. Who am I? You as a businessman, as an advocate, a lawyer, a surgeon, a doctor, you're at the top of your profession. Sometimes you have to just sit and reflect and say, wow, who am I? Apart from those who, reached, who inherited great riches, everybody else knows they got there by default if they are honest. That they actually had nothing to do with it. They got a break somewhere. Favor. That's why we come back when you sit in your house, when you sit with your children, when you sit in your business, your empire, whatever God gave you, and you reflect by yourself. You say, who am I? Oh God, what is my house that you brought me this far? I have to go. But I ask you as a man, so many things I wanted to say. Look at all this. Um, a man after God's own heart. You go back to your study, wherever you are, and you go sit before God and you thank Him. And you pray those little prayers that matter, that nobody else sees. Vows and commitments. And you give your heart back to God. And you make up your mind today. Because the presence of God has already touched you. And today I say, I'm a man of God. 
Ek gaan nie een man van my traditie en my kultuur wees nie. Ek wil een man van God wees. I want to be a man after the heart of God. And I want to serve God's purpose for my life. So that when I stand before Jesus one day, I will hear, well done, good and faithful servant. I pray that God gives you a desire. And I pray for all those, many of you that have been so blessed. And God's been so good to you. That you really will just go sit. Sometimes my prayers are very short. I can pray a lot. But sometimes my prayers are short. If I reflect and sit, I just say thank you. I'm just overwhelmed because I know I deserve nothing of it. It is His grace, His grace, His grace. Come on, brothers, give the Lord a praise. Come on. Come on, you can thank Him where you are for all that you have done. I will thank you. I will thank you. Come on. Oh, come on. God is looking for men that He can have faith in. You be the man God can have faith in. You be the man that shows up on the battlefield. You be the man of courage. You be the man of purpose. You be the man that serves the purpose of God in your generation. Because naked I came into this world and naked I'm going to leave this world. Come on. Today you are sitting in the house of God and you can reflect and you can say, Who am I, God? Who am I? Come on. The Lord has been good to you. Thank Him this morning. Praise Him this morning. Worship Him this morning. Humble yourself this morning. And your heart will hunger after God again. Come on. We're going to sing a worship song. Hallelujah. a moment just let's close our eyes and lift our hands come on let's take this moment just to reflect on who God is for us come on just thank you from the bottom of your heart sometimes we do not have even enough words to say thank you but just try and express it this morning that we are what we are because of him with every head bowed and every eye closed believers praying maybe you're standing in this place and as you're lifting your hands You can't even say that God is your father. Maybe you don't know even God. Maybe the picture that you have is like the picture that most of us had. That it's an angry God standing in heaven with a book writing down everything that we've done. But as we heard this morning, is a loving father. He is there for us. That as you are standing there with head bowed, 
and eyes closed. Maybe you're saying, boss, I never knew God. Maybe you used to know Him, but things have happened. And maybe as pastor said, things of life became a burden to you. And your picture started changing of God and you drifted away like the prodigal son. But God is calling you today. This whole service is here to bring you to your attention. To tell you that He loves you more than you can ever imagine. Maybe you're not even sure that heaven is your home. But today you want to make sure. We cannot leave this place without giving you assurance of salvation. But I want to say to men specifically, maybe you've done things wrong. Maybe you weren't the kindest one. Maybe you weren't the best towards your children. But come on, as you accept Jesus, He can turn it around. He can help you change and become the Father. Because the Word says in Romans 5, 5, that the Holy Spirit is the one that shed abroad the love of God in our hearts. And through that love, it's easy to love others. But it starts by a relationship first. So as every head is bowed and every eye closed, believers pray. If you want to come back to God, maybe you've never given your life, life to Christ, so you would like to make sure. If that is you, just quietly wherever you are, just lift up your hand and say, please pray for me. Come on, slip it up now, hi. In Jesus' name. Come on, hands are being lifted all over. Come on, thank you for the hands on the balcony. At the bottom blocks. You're on the flank. Come on, if that is you, just lift it up. Say, God. Come on, that guilt you don't have to carry anymore. Maybe you've run away. Maybe as a child you used to serve Him. But in your mind you think the things that you've done, you cannot come back. I want to say to you that God is waiting with open arms. Come on, if you slip it up, you can put it down fast. If you have not, slip it up. Slip it up now. In Jesus' name. Come on, hands are being all over this place, being lifted. Come on, you come back to God. Come on, He loves you. He loves you more than you can ever imagine. Come on, in all the venues that are watching, all the churches, if you haven't slipped it up yet, slip it up now. In Jesus' name. Amen, family. Can I get your attention for a moment, please? In a moment, every one of you that lifted your hands, or maybe you did not, if you brought your father with and he's not sure, then ask him this morning. Come on, it's the greatest honor if you can walk with that friend, that relative, that father to the altar. In a moment, we're going to ask you, please, to take all your personal belongings, whatever you brought to church, and go to the closest aisle next to you and come and join us at the altar. Come on, if that is you, come and just walk. We're going to be waiting for you at the altar. Come and ask that father of yours again if you would like to walk with you. Come and ask him, walk. Some of you are fighting. There's a fire burning. And not that slide in your stomach. Come on, you walk. Come on, that is God pulling you. The Holy Spirit encouraging you. Come on, you just walk. Come on, there's many of you that need to step up. Come on, there's many men. Come on, you need to decide today that as you step forward, your family will follow. Come on, your bloodline will be changed forever because of the decision that you make as a man. Come on, you walk. Come on, I know there's many more that need to walk. You come. We're going to wait. Come on, you walk. Still men walking, come on, woman. Come on, 
Come on, if you want to walk, you walk. Come on, this is the most important part of the service. Come on, as we walk. Gonna go another 30 seconds, you come. Come on, I feel in my heart there's people that need to walk. Come on, you don't want to leave this building not knowing. Come on, maybe you have to put that pride aside and you just walk. Come on, there's some men that need to humble themselves again. You walk. Come on, this is not a walk of shame. This is a walk of liberty or freedom. Come on, amen, family. Come on, what an amazing word this morning. Come on, God loves us. And we want to say to every one of you that's standing in the front, God loves you more than you can ever imagine. And our heart as a church is exactly that, that we want to portray what God has done for us in your lives. And in a moment, we're going to lead you in a prayer. And we're going to trust with you that God's going to come into your heart. And the word says that if you can confess Him with your mouth and believe in your heart, that you will be saved. And this morning, we're going to lead you in that prayer. And all the venues that are watching, and your life will never be the same again. But we ask you, that as your life gets changed, don't go do it by yourself. There's two things we want to ask you. The first thing is allow us to walk with you. Because there's many things that has happened in your heart, things around you, your surroundings. And we want to help you in that journey. Because it is impossible to do this journey by yourself. That is why God brings you into a family. You are part of this family. Pastor Art, Pastor Reta becomes your spiritual parents. And the second thing that is important, we want you to go to your highways and byways, to your houses, to your friends, to your neighbors, and go tell them what has happened this morning. Because you're going to feel a peace that you've never had. There's going to come a joy upon your life that you never experienced before. You're going to see as you walk out here, the scars will be brighter. Things will be different. Why? Because God is going to live in the inside of you. So please be so kind in the front just to put your hand on your heart and just pray after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you today and I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Lord, I believe that you died for my sins and that you rose again and that you live forevermore. I thank you, Father, for this new life that the oldest pass and the new has come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, family. Come on, the Word says that if you believe it, you will be saved as you pray. So in a moment, we're going to ask you just to go to a room that we would love to pray for you. We want to take you there. If you do not have a Bible, we would love to give you one. And we want to take your information, as I said, so that we can walk with you. So if you can be so kind in Pretoria, just to turn to my right, your left. If you can follow the pastors there and all the other churches, you're welcome to follow the pastors as they lead you. Hey man, family, if you can be so kind just to grab your seats as we turn our attention to the screens. The past few weeks, we've been studying the origins of tithing, and we specifically look at what the Old Testament says. We discovered that giving and tithing never originated under the law of Moses. Bringing an offering of your increase was a custom already found with the very first family who lived on this planet. Giving and by implication, tithing started out as a hard response to God's goodness and God's blessing. Today, I want us to have a look and start looking at what the New Testament and specifically Jesus said about money, about giving, and also about tithing. Let's start with one of the very first and most well-known comments that Jesus made. 
In his very first sermon, Jesus said the following, and I'm reading from Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. How could you worship two gods at the same time? You will have to hate one and love the other or be devoted to one and despise the other. You can't worship the true God while enslaved to the God of money. Jesus said that the war for your heart is not between Him and the devil, but between Him and your money. Your money is the one thing that has got the potential to lure your heart away from Him. This passage in Matthew chapter 6 forces us to examine our lives and ask ourselves, who is our master? Jesus said you cannot have two masters because anyone, any master, expect your full devotion, attention, and loyalty. You cannot serve two masters because the reality uh, is both masters have competing directions for your life. You cannot serve both because they are heading in different directions. The past few weeks, I've emphasized the point that giving is not a law thing, but a hard thing. This was Jesus' way of saying uh, and asking the question, who's got your heart? Just three verses prior to what we read, Jesus made the following profound statement. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 21, we read, For your heart will always pursue what you esteem as your treasure. Your heart, my dear friend, will follow your treasure. It is not difficult to bring my tithe or my offering because my heart is connected to God. My heart pursues God. God is the priority of my heart. Let me pray for us before we're going to receive the offering. Father, thank you that we can come to you today. And Father, we understand this morning this principle that we cannot serve two masters. You want our whole heart. You want everything in our life. And we willingly come and we declare today that you are the priority of our life. As we give, we give not out of obligation, but Father, we give because of a grateful heart, because you are priority number one in our life. Please accept our offering today as an offering, declaring again that you are priority number one in our life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We're going to wait on you for the tithes and offerings today. Uh, our ushers will wait on you. Please keep in mind that we close the doors for your security. And while we receive the offering today, we're going to listen to an anointed item.
was all that time on his knees Now all I want to be, Lord, I just want to be Half of the man item this morning just two quick announcements remember dream week is around the corner come on you need to plan you need to get your tickets and come on if you would like to get plugged in and become part of our spiritual gifts night it's going to be tuesday a week to come and our disc profile come on pastor said it's important that we get involved and we want to help you to get you plugged in what is your spiritual gift and where you can serve so tuesday in a week's time the 27 as we just close together Father, we thank you for every person that got saved this morning. Thank you for all the men that are standing up and serving their communities and their families. Thank you, Father, that we will love you more than we can ever can this week because you've touched us today and we will go this week and show that love to others. We thank and we bless you for everyone that gave into the offering as we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed Father's Day, family. Enjoy your Sunday. Father's Day. Day. Happy Father's Day to all the daddies in the house. We would love to wish you all the best and we pray God's blessing upon you. We pray that God will increase you in so many ways and may this day be a blessed day for you. Amen, CD. Now, a special Happy Father's Day to my dad, Pastor Adbosov, our spiritual father here at CRC. We just want to say that we love you. We honor you. We thank God for you. Thank you for believing in us. Thank you for loving us and caring for us the way that you do. May you have a blessed Father's Day. Yes, Angie. Thank you, Pastor Ad, for being the father that you are to many of us that yeah. doesn't have daddies right now. We are blessed to have you. And we will be having our baby dedications this coming week. Make sure that you contact your zone pastor. Thank you. Gia Bonga. Mikensile. Baya Donkey. Enkosi. Kalebu. Nyatoz. Kalebu. Ndoleboha. Ndinotend. Thank you, Pastor Art, for every sacrifice. Thank you for being a trailblazer and for leading us with integrity. Thank you for being a man of honor, a man after God's own heart always leading us closer to Jesus. Pastor, happy Father's Day. We want to say from the bottom of our hearts, thank you. We want to thank you for being such a great father to all of us. We truly want to thank you for being the greatest spiritual father to every single one of us. And thank you so much for continuing to inspire faith in us, in our lives and the millions of, of many people across the globe. We come today and we thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for who you are. I don't think as children of yours, we can ask for anything better. Yeah. We got the best. Yeah. Amen. And be blessed on yeah. this Father's Day, Pastor. Amen. Amen. We love you. May you enjoy this day, Pastor. Happy Father's Day. We love honor and celebrate you. Thank you for every opportunity that you have ever given us and we just want to say that we truly do value you. Happy Father's Day, Pastor Art! Happy Father's Day! Today on Father's Day, we want to honor our spiritual father, Pastor Art Bosov. Pastor Art, we want to thank you for your strong, decisive leadership. Thank you 
for your example, your passion and your commitment in building God's kingdom. Thank you, Pastor, for leading millions of people to Jesus Christ. Because of you, we want to do more for God's kingdom. We especially honor all the men in our community, men who stand up for what is right, like Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Men who use their strength for service, not status. Men of honor, integrity, and substance, like Joseph. We honor you today for being men who love, provide, and protect us. We look up to you as you lead your families with integrity and strength. We admire every man who has laid down his life for the cause of Christ. Jesus reminds us in John 15, 13, there is no greater love than laying down one's life for one's friend. We respect all the men in our society who are unapologetic in their faith. We appreciate your commitment towards God's house through your time, talent, and treasure. We stand with you as we fight the good fight of faith with perseverance, even when the road gets hard. We honor and value the critical role that you have to play in shifting things in our society. We thank God today for every man who is a warrior but also a worshipper, a man after God's own heart, a man like David. Oh, just clap your hands.